there are 20 CRTs on this wall. Oh yeah, wow, that is great. Now there are some special CRTs right there. Now here's something you don't see every day. All right, so welcome back to Retro Tech. It is 2023, and I thought that this would be a great opportunity to kind of show you a tour of a CRT restoration and repair shop. And yes, this is one of the only shops on the East Coast, and it is my shop. That's right, the Retro Tech repair shop. So I wanted to take an opportunity now to show you some things that I have in place here, some things that are in the collection, and also some rarities. And then we're also gonna talk about some of the new plans I have for this year, because I do have some big things to announce, like a plan for live streams, with actual CRTs being fixed and repaired and restored. I thought we'd just start in the most exciting place here, and that is my indoor storage area where I'm standing in front of well over 20 CRTs and other types of monitors I've got here. Lots of different rare analog displays, but let's just start by looking at what's behind me on the CRT rack number one here. All right, everybody. So as I mentioned, this is our monster rack number one filled to the brim with CRTs. This is a BVM F-Series 14-inch F5U. Here we have an A-Series BVM 14-inch, and this is also an F5U. And then here's a second BVM A14 F5U. Now this is just some old sharp CRT television from the late 80s, a sharp Linitron, and it's a 13-inch tube. Here's a set of two Sony KV 13-inch CRTs, a Toshiba with the built-in DVD player, got a Commodore video monitor, model 1702, JVC monitor that is pretty much a clone of the Commodore monitor. Now this is a 15-inch JVC H series CRT, Sony PVM 8-inch, Sony PVM 12-inch. This is an old Macintosh. PC CRT all in one. Sony PVM 14 M2 MDU Macintosh SE. Portable color television here from JVC. Generic black and white television here. Sony BVM F series again. Sony CVM 1270. Sony PVM 14 M2 MDU. Oh, here's that terrible Sony LMD1420 PVM LCD screen. And a 20 inch JVC D-Series CRT. There is a second rack here with quite a few more CRTs on it. So let's take a quick look at what's on this rack. There's actually something really, really cool on this one. All right, so up here are just some tools. This is actually a BNK 467 picture tube analyzer. And here we have a series of these eight inch PVMs, just a few different of the same model there. And then we have this three pack of color Sony four inch screens or five inch screens. We have a Sony PVM eight inch inside of a carrying case. Gosh, those are hard to get into. See it in there? Here's a Sony KV, the nine inch. Here's an eight inch that's kind of torn into pieces with a project going on. Here are two more eight inch PVMs. This one is the nine L2, and this one actually is a BVM. You could tell that by seeing there's no volume knob right there. All right, so here we have something. How about this cool Ikigami set? First off, this is a TM1417R, but next to that we have the lovely HD Ready HTM1990R color monitor. Here's that amazing degaussing coil tool right on top of there. Next to that is an Olympus OEV143. And then here, wow, check out this thing. This is a CRT projector. It's the high resolution 900. It does do RGB and composite video, but this is an actual full CRT projector. Here's an OEV202 from Olympus. And here's a Sony KV that is 20 inches. This next thing I wanna show you is this cart that is just so amazingly cool. This was something I found at a salvage yard years ago, uh, back in the good old days when you could go to recycling places and actually buy PVMs from them. Uh, this was from one of those loads. It's a scope cart and it's perfect for 14 inch PVMs. It's really made for them. 
It's very stable and safe, and it even has a nice little shelf right here. All right, I do have quite a few other storage racks in here, and I'm not gonna go through every single one of those, because a lot of them, I just have parts and things like that on them. Uh, this one right here behind me does have some important things on it. So a lot of these items are the items that I use to test uh, things like signals, and I actually like to use real hardware. So I've got a couple of Ataris here, I've got a VCR, and then a couple Extron devices up here, you know, some gaming consoles, especially down here are a lot of the gaming consoles that I ultimately use to test a lot of equipment after it's been serviced. And really two things that are special back here are these two CRTs. These are my two translucent CRTs. And uh, maybe my favorite one of the two is this one on the right, because this one actually came from a prison in Texas and it is completely see-through probably has an amazing story to it. Next to that, I have this Zenith translucent green CRT. All right, below there we have a 3DO, just more cables and equipment, some more Extron gear over here. This is a BVM controller, the Sony BKM-11R. All right, now I'd like to take a second to show you some of the cool stuff that I use to try to keep myself a little bit organized here in the shop. And one of those is this big whiteboard, which I do try to write my schedule out on and things that I'm waiting on, parts, etc. And then I have this cool, uh, I think it was for like a butcher shop style thing. It's a kind of a kitchen grade stainless steel cart. And then on top of that, I have this amazing thick ESD mat from Gamers Nexus. It's literally the biggest mat they made. And it's just an incredible surface to work on. And uh, it gives you all kinds of cool measurements. And it's usually used for things like PC stuff but I just love these mats and you'll be able to see throughout this video that I've probably spent $300 in their store on just these ESD mats. You see this even has a bottom row where I've got some other stuff like some circuit boards from a PVM, some tools in these bins, and even look at this, a 20 inch uh, Trinitron tube from a Sony PVM. So once I've got things scheduled out, I obviously need a good workspace and that's what I'm gonna show you next. Now for the next part of this tour, we're gonna to go through my workspace area and my workbench specifically. And this is where I do all my capacitor replacements, my board work, anything that has to do with soldering. And if it can be done in the shop, it's done in this workspace area. I also wanted to take this time to make a big announcement and that is that I'm gonna be live streaming uh, from this workspace starting this year. I mean, relatively soon, that's a lot of what I'm doing is trying to work and get ready for this, is get some hardware set up and things ready to go to set up, set up a new streaming camera over here over the workspace so that I can show you a lot of things that happen in the shop normally. Let's start off here with the actual workspace workbench. You'll notice it's just a standard desk. I do have a power plug here for USB power and then two normal plugins here in the United States. Uh, this is just a work pad. I've been working on some CRT boards here. These are two deflection boards from Sony PVM2530 monitors. And then you'll notice that they are sitting on yet another Gamers Nexus mod mat. This is the slightly smaller version. It fits really good on here. Has a great workspace area that's ESD safe. And then you'll notice over here, I've actually got it run uh, to a ground strap that you could put around your wrists and that way you won't short out any board as you're working on it. Now look for soldering equipment. I'm pretty much stuck using HACO equipment. I say stuck, but I actually really do like HACO equipment. This is a 301 that I've been using for a very long time. I really enjoy this tool. I did get the 633 stand for it. This is another must have for me and it's a smoke absorber. Next to that, you will see my soldering iron setup. This is FX951, and I absolutely love this unit. It works fantastically, and you do have to spend a little bit more for this. It comes with different wands. I have a wand set up for this the normal way, and then there's actually a micro soldering wand that I have available for this too that I can use, and that's my soldering iron. All right, here's one of my cool little storage things. That's a shelf filled with just stock capacitors. So a lot of these are common capacitors I end up needing in the shop. And I try to keep this full so that when I have an issue with a board, I have caps on hand. So here's that other micro 
wand for micro soldering parts. Look how small that tip is on there. It's just so tiny. Look, don't get excited. This is prop money. Looks pretty good though for prop money, doesn't it? Oh, I do have a backup FR301 Hacko right here that's new in case the other one has any troubles. And this is a cool tool. This is the convergence gauge that everybody loves to see. Um, it's actually the lens tool that shows three different colors. Let's see if we can get this to light up. You see how it has red, green, and blue in there. And you can use that to check the convergence on CRTs and see how it is throughout the screen. So here are some other tools that I've got in the shop that I haven't even opened yet. One of those is a Color Monkey light probe. Maybe in some live streams this year, we'll figure out how to use this light probe and calibrate some screens with that for color. And here's another tool I've really been wanting to learn, and that's this Riggle DS1054 oscilloscope. I've had this thing for a couple months, and honestly, I've barely used it at all. So I need to learn how to use it and kind of do some CRT testing with this exact unit. All right, guys, next we're gonna take a look at the CRT Boneyard and also my larger offloading area. Now, this place is something that I've talked about before. I actually just did a recent video on this area. So if you wanna check that out, I'll put that there. I really only had a couple things I wanted to talk about really quickly with you in this shop that's going on right now. So right now I've been working my butt off to get some Sony PVM 2530 monitors ready. And I was able to get one good Sony PVM 2530 right here. It took four scrap units to get this thing together there's one and there's one and there's one and then there's the fourth one I mean there's all four together that's what it took to piece these together so that was a job I recently got to do is a lot of fun now this is supposed to go to a museum hopefully if we can get that side of things done um, with the museum staff and get them this 2530 into their collection so they can add it for art pieces but anyway this is the outdoor area where everything gets offloaded and then when i meet up with trucking companies they usually come here and they pick up loads that are shipped off all over the country and so that's all done from this space in here uh, but the problem is is it's really cold out here right now and also if you saw the video i did out here last time you know that this place kind of gives me the willies so let's go ahead and get out of here There you are. I've been looking all over for you. What are you doing in there? All right, so we're gonna take a second to look at something really cool. And that is my Frigidaire Retro Refrigerator. This is an original 60s model that my grandfather had bought new back in the 1960s. And it still works perfectly. Well, I say perfectly, the freezer's not so good up there. Check out that ice buildup. But other than that, it works fine. It's predominantly filled with kids' juice drinks and weird craft beers. But yeah, how cool is that? You know your boy Steve has got the retro refrigerator in his shop. All right, so you guys have seen my CRT storage space, my workbench area, and my offloading area and even inside my refrigerator and hopefully that gives you a better idea of what's going on here at the shop what i have here what's coming soon and a little bit more behind the scenes on what's been going on as far as like what's coming soon i again want you to just keep a lookout on my social media profiles for announcements on when we're going to start live streaming because I think that's gonna be a big deal. I think people are really gonna enjoy what I do have planned for that. And also, if you really do like these style of videos, this is something I have been doing the last couple of years exclusively on Patreon, where I go through the shop every month and try to update people on what's been going on. And so if you're a Patreon member and you look forward to those shop tours, look for more of those to come starting next month in February with shop tours that again are exclusively only available on Patreon. Thanks again for watching today. I hope you all have a great new year and I will see you all next time with some more retro content.